What's cracking, my Garage Gym geeks, Peloton peeps, and all the rest of you fitness freaks? Hope everybody's been having a great week. I know I have. I just got back from a trip from Cologne, Germany to check out the world's largest fitness expo, FIBO. And let me tell you, there was some wacky and wonderful stuff out there from revolving rock climbing walls to slackline treadmills. You name it, it was there. Now, one of the highlights was checking out the Avron booth and learning about some really cool stuff they have in the works, which unfortunately I would be killed if I talked about, but be on the lookout on connect the watch for new videos about some of that later this year. The other big highlight which I can talk about was being able to visit the rep booth and be able to try out all of the new equipment they recently announced like the new rep Adonis cable tower, Pegasus attachment, and of course the new rep and Pippin fast series adjustable dumbbell collaboration. And while I didn't get enough time on any of these to be able to give you a definitive review, I can say that upon first impressions, all of it felt and worked as well as I could have hoped. So really excited and impressed by what I saw at rep. Now outside of FIBO, we have a lot of shit to cover this week, including Peloton's massive decision to eliminate its free membership tier, which has since plummeted its stock even further. Plunge has released a brand new lineup of its cold plunges alongside a new high-tech chiller. iFit has brought back a fan favorite, Tommy Rivs, with an expansion of his Road to Recovery series, and so much more. As always, I am your host, Colin Jenkins. Make sure to subscribe to connect the watch for the latest in home fitness. And if you're ready, let's get started. So first off, we have a lot to talk about regarding Peloton this week. Now for one, Peloton seems to have acquired patents from a company called Ghost Pacer in regards to augmented reality glasses to display a holographic pacer. And look, Peloton doesn't have like a ton of money nowadays to burn on acquiring crap they won't ever use. So there's at least something here that Peloton finds very attractive for whatever they are currently working on. And in some ways, I think this acquisition makes sense. One of the reasons people end up canceling a Peloton membership, especially runners, is the fact that they want to run outside when the weather allows it. And though Peloton does offer some audio classes, it doesn't really often do enough to justify a membership. So I can see why Peloton might be interested in adding like a holographic instructor that runs alongside you while you wear AR glasses like this. The other part of me though is like, Peloton, why don't you just add some basic running tracking features before you try to go all futuristic with some holographic tech? Like, I'm not sure that this is the best use of the limited resources at hand, but who knows, maybe this tech will lead to something really cool coming from Peloton in the future. But first, Peloton has to survive long enough to get to that future, and reports this week about Peloton now eliminating its free membership tier is not a good sign. Less than a year after that free membership tier was released, Peloton says it was canceled due to its failing to convert free users into paid subscribers. So now instead of a free membership tier, that has been replaced with a free seven day trial. And of course, after these reports came out, Peloton stock fell beyond its previous all time low to now around $3.02, which makes it almost a 30% drop just within the past month. It is fascinating to witness a company like Peloton, the leader in the home fitness space, continue to flounder like this year after year. And while many of Peloton's largest issues stem from the original CEO, John Foley's overly optimistic forecasting during the pandemic, this latest blunder sits squarely on the current CEO, Barry McCarthy's shoulders. Cause look, a free membership tier is typically a very good strategy for growth. And I believe McCarthy was correct in adding it last year, but just because something is free, you can't just put out a crappy experience and expect that to convert into paid memberships. Now the free tier basically consisted of around 25 available classes mixed between strength, cycling, running, and other categories. And while these classes could theoretically be repeated, it was obviously structured more like a free trial rather than a free membership tier. And the difference between those two is very important. A free membership needs to be able to provide enough value to keep somebody interested long term, thus helping lead to better growth and more conversions than a simple time based trial where people either get converted quickly or not at all. Peloton could have easily offered a great and valuable free experience, something maybe similar to Strava with workout and metric tracking alongside social features to make that free membership valuable enough to continue using but they didn't. And so of course Peloton's free membership didn't know better than a regular trial would. And I'm not sure what kind of blindfolds they are wearing to not have foreseen this. And now that the free membership has been entirely scrapped, I am not sure what Peloton with its current leadership at least can do to turn things around. 
They still have about a year and a half before their almost 2 billion debt matures, which they don't have the cash to pay back, at which point they'll need to either go into deeper debt with refinancing or face bankruptcy. Or hopefully, long before then, we'll see another company buy Peloton and take on a whole new approach. But time is a ticking at this point, and I think any of us who care about Peloton are going to be in for one roller coaster of a ride. Now, let's move on to a company that is actually doing pretty well, and that is Plunge, the makers of the Cold Plunge, who recently released a whole new high tech chiller in a lineup of their cold plunge options. There are four new options now, the lowest cost of which is a portable pop-up barrel for around $150, though of course that does not include the cost of the new chiller, which is by far the most expensive part of these cold tubs. The chiller, by the way, costs $3,299 by itself, which while expensive is pretty top of the line with the ability to bring the water down to 37 degrees Fahrenheit, it's able to connect and be controlled via the app on your phone, and perhaps most importantly, it is now 30% more quiet than before, which is sort of a big deal because these chillers can be pretty damn loud. The next option is the Plunge Evolve Air, which I'm a bit mixed on. It's an inflatable tub, which is nice in the sense that you can take it down and move it around easily, but it also, in my opinion, doesn't look anywhere as nice as the regular tub. And then you have the Evolve XL, which is $6,690, and that's a lot of money for a cold tub. It's similar in price, though, to the previous XL Plunge, but it seems that at least so far, they aren't selling a new version of the regular size plunge that works with the new chiller, but maybe that'll come at some point. And then if you have a lot of cash to burn, you can opt in for the new Plunge All-In, which combines the chiller within the tub into one cohesive unit, which does look really nice, but you gotta really love your cold baths to fork up the dough for one of those. Next up, iFit has added part five of the Tommy Rivs program in Guatemala. For those of you who don't have iFit or don't know about Tommy Rivs, you are missing out because this is one of the best instructors of any fitness platform hands down and also one of the toughest dudes ever to roam the earth, literally pretty much coming back from the dead through a horrendous cancer, a really one of the few fitness instructors that I always try to check out whenever he releases something new. So even if you don't have a membership with iFit, if you have a treadmill, I suggest becoming a member at least for a month just to check out Tommy Riv's new series, or really any of his series if you haven't taken them you won't be disappointed. Now, finally, let's take a look at some of the biggest deals of the week. Now, first off, we have Whoop's first sale of the year. If you followed Connect the Watts for a while, you might know that I am a big Whoop fan, and I think in terms of recovery tracking, it's easily one of the best options available. The sale is for both current and new members with 10% off both the 12 month and 24 month memberships, which if you go for the latter, it'll bring that price down to under $15 per month, which I think is very worth what you get here. So definitely worth checking out. Then we have a flash sale for Hoka running shoes at Nordstrom Rack. And I mentioned this sale because I actually really like Hoka shoes personally, and also the sale is pretty damn good with a large number of options of up to 50% off regular price. So check that out if you're looking for a deal on some good running shoes. And finally, there's a sale on Amazon for the Echelon Bike EX15. So for just $378, I think this is a pretty compelling offer, especially because the actual bike itself is not bad at all and given that you can hook up your ipad or phone to it it means you can take classes on echelon or peloton or just stream some shows while you work out and this is a very good price for a bike that is pretty similar in quality to like a peloton bike just without the screen and that's a wrap my fitness freaks i hope you enjoyed this week's recap for what's new in fitness appreciate you being here and i'll see you next time